In this series of videos, I'm going to be talking about ratio units. Ratio units. This is a topic that should be helpful to students who are studying chemistry or physics. Let, 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 let's look at some examples of what I mean by ratio units. Suppose that an object travels a distance of 5 meters. An object travels a distance of 5 meters. Well, the units here are meters. Well, this is not a ratio unit, because you can see that meters are not a ratio. On the other hand, suppose that the object is traveling at 5 meters per second. Suppose we have a speed of 5 meters per second. Well, meters per second is what I mean by a ratio unit. And I hope it's obvious why I would call this a ratio unit. A ratio is just a fancy word for a fraction. So a ratio unit is a unit that forms a fraction with a numerator and a denominator. Well, clearly meters per second is forming that type of ratio. Uh, okay, so this is our first example of a ratio unit. Meters is not a ratio unit because the unit here is not a fraction. But meters per second is a ratio unit, because the unit there is a ratio. It's a fraction. Let me give you a few more examples. Uh, let's say uh, an object has a mass of 6 kilograms. Mass of 6 kilograms. Is kilograms a ratio unit? No, because there's no fraction here. But how about if the object has a density of 6 kilograms per cubic meter? a density of 6 kilograms per cubic meter. Is that a ratio unit? Yes. Kilograms per cubic meter, that does form a ratio or a fraction. So this would be another example of a ratio unit. Uh, let's say that an object has energy of 3 joules. Well, even if you've never heard of joules before, you should still be able to see if this is a ratio unit. Well, there's no fraction here, so it's not a ratio unit. On the other hand, suppose that we're delivering a power of 3 watts. W here is watts. Well, perhaps you've already learned, or you will learn later in your course, that watts means joules per second. So 3 watts means 3 joules per second. So is joules per second a ratio unit? Yes. So watts is also a type of ratio unit because watts just means joules per second. So you can see that actually sometimes it's not obvious whether a unit is a ratio unit or not. Even if it doesn't look like a ratio, you might actually be able to break it down into a ratio. So watts are a ratio unit. They're the ratio of joules per second. Let's say that we have an electric force of 4 newtons. Let's say we have an electric force of 4 newtons. Is this a ratio unit? No, because newtons are not a ratio. But let's say we have an electric field. Of 4 newtons per coulomb. An electric field of 4 newtons per coulomb. Is that a ratio? Yes. Newtons per coulomb is a ratio unit. So here's another example of a ratio unit. Lastly, we could consider an electric potential energy of 7 joules. Electric potential energy of 7 joules. Is this a ratio unit? No. Joules is not a ratio. But we could also consider an electric potential of 7 volts. seven volts electric potential. It turns out that electric potential is a different thing from electric potential energy. Is this a ratio unit? Well, at first it looks like it's not. However, you will learn in your course that volts are joules per coulomb. So seven volts is really seven joules per coulomb. So this turns out to be, in fact, a ratio unit. Volts are joules per coulomb, and that forms a ratio. So here's another ratio unit. 
Incidentally, um, I think that volts are one of the most confusing concepts to most uh, physics students, and electric potential is one of the most confusing concepts. Just understanding that a volt is a ratio unit of joules per coulomb can really be, be a big help in understanding electric potential. This is important for chemistry students as well, uh, because chemistry students also encounter volts when they're studying electrochemistry. Well, a volt is just seven. Uh, a volt is just the ratio unit of joules per coulomb. Okay, so now we've given a bunch of examples, and hopefully you can see what I mean by a ratio unit. By the way, the term ratio unit is not an official term. It's just something that I made up. So uh, I needed a term for all these different types of units. So I think a logical term for them is ratio units, and that's what we're going to be discussing in this series of videos. Uh, so. Um, when are ratio units helpful to you? Well, um, I'm mainly thinking about how they could be helpful to students of chemistry and physics. Uh, now, actually, ratio units pop up in a lot of, different, a lot of other contexts, too. Um, so even if you're not studying chemistry or physics, it might still be useful to you to understand um, ratio units. Uh, even if you're studying uh, something quite different, like, say, finance or economics, it could be useful to you uh, to understand ratio units. But I'm mainly going to be thinking of students that are studying chemistry or physics. Now, um, where does this uh, information that we're talking about usually fit in to a normal physics or chemistry class? Uh, and what part of your normal physics or chemistry class would you learn about ratio units? And the answer is, usually this concept is not really taught at all. Um, that's not because it's not important. It's very important, as I think we're going to see. But instructors just assume that people already know how to interpret ratio units. As the class goes on, your instructor is basically going to be assuming, probably without even realizing they're assuming it, but your instructor is probably just going to be assuming that you understand how to interpret ratio units. Um, so this is probably never going to be covered explicitly in your lectures, and there's probably no section of your textbook that covers it at all, uh, but I think that's a mistake, uh, because my experience is that a lot of students do not understand ratio units. They don't have a good intuition for ratio units, um, even though their instructors are thinking that they do. Um, I think it would be good for physics and chemistry classes to cover ratio units in the first couple of weeks, and I think it would be good for physics textbooks and chemistry textbooks to cover this topic of ratio units um, early on in the book. Uh, but generally, they don't. Uh, and that is the reason why I'm making this series of videos, to try to fill that gap. I'm trying to cover a topic that I think is very important in physics and chemistry, but which a lot of students never, um, never really learn, and that therefore um, that becomes um, a big obstacle to their mastering the material in their classes. Um, so this is material that I think is very useful for physics and chemistry, even though it's usually not explicitly covered. And actually, once you understand ratio units, I think you're going to find that that topic pops up over and over throughout both semesters of physics and both semesters of chemistry. Ratio units is really a topic that's spread throughout both physics and chemistry, which is why I feel that it's it's so useful and so important for students to really understand how to interpret ratio units. Uh, now, who's the intended audience for these videos? Well, um, in these videos, I'm trying to uh, make videos that will be especially helpful to students who find this material difficult. Uh, so I'm assuming that you find this material difficult. Uh, and to try to help those students, uh, I'm going to try to go quite slowly. Uh, I'm going to try to repeat myself a lot, and I'm going to try to give a lot of examples. I hope that all those things will help people that are finding this material to be difficult. But the flip side is that if you don't find this material to be difficult, uh, you might be really bored by these videos. Well, um, then go watch something else. Um, if you find these videos go too slow and are boring, um, then you can probably uh, learn this material from some other source. Uh, but the intended audience for these videos are people who don't already understand this material and are finding it difficult to learn. And I hope that uh, you'll find these videos helpful then. Um, now, like I say, I think that this material is material that really should be covered in the first one or two weeks of a physics or chemistry class. Um, so I'm hoping that many of you who are watching these videos are people who are just at the beginning of your physics and chemistry classes. So I'm really not going to be assuming that you're really familiar yet with physics or chemistry concepts. The one thing that would be nice if you were already a little familiar with is unit conversion. 
Uh, usually unit conversion is covered early in physics and chemistry. It would be nice if you had a little bit of familiarity with that, but even that's not going to be too important. Uh, so I'm really not assuming that you um, already know much of anything about physics or chemistry as we go through this material. Uh, on the other hand, it, uh, there's a good chance that many of you have already um, gotten a good way into your physics and chemistry classes, and you might have already um, covered quite a bit of material. Um, and then um, I think that you'll see as we go through this uh, material on ratio units how it sheds some light on some things that might otherwise not have been crystal clear to you as the class was going on. Okay, so now we're ready um, to launch uh, into um, what it is I want to cover in these videos. Again, we want to cover ratio units, and my goal here is to give you a good intuitive understanding of what the meaning of ratio units is and how those are useful to you um, when you're trying to understand concepts and solve problems.